Lisa Pierre, thank you so much. I have the wonderful uh, opportunity to introduce to you uh, Dr. Fred Luter. There are many wonderful things to say about him, but I want him to have every second possible to preach. But let me tell you that uh, he's always uh, these days introduced as, and it's an important historical fact, that he is the first African-American ever to be elected uh, president of the Southern Baptist Convention, a convention which divided 100 and... 178 years ago in 1845 over uh, the question of slavery uh, prior to the Civil War. And now here is this great uh, man of God who leads the Southern Baptist Convention. But there, there are more important things to say about Dr. Luter than that. Number one, he's married to Elizabeth. Uh, they've got children, uh, Chip, uh, Fred III, and uh, Kimberly. And uh, now they are recently uh, grandparents. So Fred IV uh, has, is, now, is now on the scene. Uh, I can tell you that he is the pastor of the great Franklin Avenue Baptist Church uh, in New Orleans, but also has uh, campuses and congregations that in the providence of God because of Katrina have started uh, in other places around the nation. But the best thing I can say uh, about uh, Fred Luter, Dr. Fred Luter, is uh, this, this man has come to us today to preach the word of God. Dr. Luter, come. Well, good morning. I will, I will, I will. Good morning, good morning. Huskers, good morning. I know, amen. That's what I like to hear. I like folk talk back at me. Amen. Amen. I got an amen corner over there. Amen. Uh, giving obedience to God, my Father, Jesus Christ, who is the Lord and Savior of my life. Dr. Sloan and Mrs. Sloan, thank you so very much for this tremendous privilege, my brother, that you've given me to be here today at Houston Baptist University. My first time ever on this campus. I'm so honored uh, to be here today and to be here with the Huskers. Amen. Amen. To my dear friends, uh, Tom and Nona Mosley, thank you so very much. It's so good to see them again. They have been so instrumental in my life, particularly since Hurricane Katrina. Tom and Nona led a group of folk to rebuild our home in New Orleans. We, after Hurricane Katrina, we had five feet of water in our home, and uh, uh, Tom and Nona led a group of folk down there to help us rebuild, and it's a joy to see them again. Pastor Sam Young, who pastors our Franklin Avenue Church here in New Orleans, good to see you, my brother, my, my homegirl. Pam, God bless you. Good to see you, and thank God for you. Uh, uh, here, Lisa, what a great job with the music. To all the pastors, the staff, and of course the students here at Houston Baptist University, I am delighted and excited because I have been invited to be here with you on this morning. Amen. And I'm asking that you pray with me and pray for me. Don't have a lot of time, so Philippians chapter 2 is where I'll be preaching from this morning. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8 of that chapter. Why is it so difficult for us as sons and daughters of God to pull off this thing called Christianity? Why is it so difficult for us on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis to be consistent in our walk with God, knowing that God desires that we will be lights in a dark world and salt in a low sodium saltless society? I want to address that this morning from a very familiar passage of Scripture. Philippians chapter 2, I want you to look at with me verses 5 through 8 of that chapter. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8 of that chapter. If you have it, please say amen. You'll find these similar words. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, but took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of uh, the cross. Our Father and our God, Master, let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God, stand in my body, think with my mind, speak with my voice. Let me decrease as you increase. Father, let them not see Fred, but God, let them see Christ. So then, God, that you may be glorified, the saints of God may be edified, Satan may be horrified, and all sinners would come to repentance. We'll be careful, God, to give your name all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And for us, Again, the people of God say amen. amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. With that text in mind, I want to preach this morning from the subject, the importance of having a renewed mind. The importance of having a renewed mind. 
Ladies and gentlemen, there's not an hour that goes by. There's not a day that goes by. There's not a week that goes by. There's not a month that goes by in the life of a believer, in the life of a child of God, in the life of a born-again Christian where your mind is not being tempted, where your mind is not being enticed, where your mind is not being lured by our enemy, by our adversary, by our tormentor, by Satan, by the devil, by Lucifer. Whether it's something you're watching on TV, Jersey Shore, Snooky, in the situation, all those folk are uh, 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 maybe Housewives of Atlanta, Housewives of, uh, uh, of Hollywood, uh, uh, maybe there's something you're watching on the internet or some other avenue or venue. Ladies and gentlemen, there's not a day that goes by, a month that goes by, a week that goes by in the mind of a child of God, in the mind of a believer, where our mind is not being tempted, enticed, uh, and lured by our adversary, by our tormentor, by the enemy. That's why Peter, young people, admonishes us. That's why Peter warns us. That's why Peter alerts us in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. When Peter says, Houston, Baptist, be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walking about, uh, seeking whom he may destroy, seeking whom he may devour, seeking whom he may defeat. Not a day goes by, Tom, not an hour goes by, not a week that goes by, not a month that goes by in the life of a believer where our enemy, our adversary, our tormentor has not put in the mind of the born-again believer, in the mind of a child of God, in the mind of a believer. Think about this, something we know we should not do, but Stuff we know we should not watch, but things we know we should not say, but I promise you, brothers, I promise you, sisters, before the 60 minutes of that hour has passed, before the 24 hours of that day has passed, before the seven days of that week has passed, before the four weeks of that month has passed, somewhere, somehow, we have found ourselves seduced uh, by the enemy. Somewhere, somehow, we find ourselves enticed uh, by the enemy. Somewhere, somehow, we find ourselves lured by the enemy. Somewhere, somehow, we find ourselves better bamboozled by the enemy. And since I'm on a college campus, somewhere, somehow, we find ourselves pumped by the enemy. <laughs> Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, the question of the hour is, one of the things that I've discovered, Tom, one of the things that I've discovered, Dr. Sloan, one of the things that I realized, ladies and gentlemen, is that none of us are exempt from the attacks of the enemy. From the pulpit to the door, from the balcony to the floor, none of us are exempt from the attacks of the enemy. None of us are exempt from the schemes of the enemy. None of us are exempt from the temptations of the enemy. I've discovered it doesn't matter your marital status. You can be single, saved, uh, and satisfied. You are not exempt. You can be married and marvelous, or married and miserable abode. You are not exempt. You can be widowed and wonderful, wonderful or widowed and weary. You are not exempt from the attacks of the enemy. Doesn't matter your marriage. Doesn't matter your position in the church. You can be a blessed bishop, a praying preacher, an engaged an elder, a devoted deacon, a terrific trustee, a committed choir member, a magnificent musician, a useful usher, a gracious greeter, a marvelous member. It doesn't matter your position in the church. You are not exempt from the attacks of the enemy. Doesn't matter your marital status. Doesn't matter your position in the church, doesn't matter your age, uh, you can be a cute child like my grandson, a tender teenager in your tempting 20s, your tantalizing 30s, uh, your farm 40s, your fabulous 50s, amen, Pastor Young, amen, uh, amen, your soaring 60s, your serene 70s, your elegant 80s, or your nostalgic 90s, it doesn't matter your age, uh, you're not exempt from the attacks of the enemy, doesn't matter your marital status, doesn't matter your position in the church, doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter your race, doesn't matter your education. You can be a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, or a senior. Ladies and gentlemen, the fact of the matter is it doesn't matter that enemy will attack any of us to get us to fall to the tempting tactics of the enemy. Doesn't matter how long you've been in church. Doesn't matter how long you've been baptized. Doesn't matter how long you've been saved. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, the fact of the matter is that the enemy will do all that he can to attack the mind of the sons and the daughters of God. Let me say that again, Pam. The enemy will do all that he can to attack the mind and the sons of daughters of God. Don't just take my word for it. Search the Bible, search the Scripture, and you'll find these things out for yourself. Think about it. Satan got to the mind of Adam and Eve, and they ate of the forbidden fruit. Satan got to the mind of Abraham and Sarah, and he lied about his marital status. Satan got to the mind of Cain, and he murdered his own brother Abel. Satan got to the mind of Noah, and he got drunk and naked in front of his kids. Satan got to the mind of Jacob, and he deceived his own daddy Isaac. Satan got to the mind of David, and he committed adultery with Bathsheba. Yes, she was fine. Yes, baby had back. She can pop it, lock it, and drop it, and all that stuff. 
But still, David was a man after God's own heart. Uh, say they got to the mind of Amnon, uh, and he raped his own sister Tamar. Say they got to the mind of Judas, and he betrayed our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, say they got to the mind of Peter, and he denied that he ever knew who Jesus was. Uh, say they got to the mind of the prodigal son, and the Bible says, uh, the Scripture says, that he wasted his inheritance on wild parties and hoochie mamas. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, see, I... I I passed in the hood, so I can say hoochie mama in the hood, but, but, but I'm at Houston Baptist University, and um, by the eminent Dr. Sloan, and I'm president of the Southern Baptist Convention, so uh, he waits his inheritance on wild parties uh, and, uh, and righteous living. Let's just put it like that, all right? And the Bible goes on and on and on, but guess what, Houston? Guess what, Huskies? It doesn't stop in the Bible. It doesn't stop in the Scripture. Satan did not stop tempting folk there in the Bible, sitting right here in this convocation service, sitting right here in this beautiful sanctuary on today, are men and women, husbands and wives, singles and seniors, teenagers and teachers, members and guests, uh, professors and uh, 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 pastors who have been, whose mind has been attacked by the enemy, whose mind has been enticed by the enemy, whose mind has been seduced by the enemy, whose mind has been bamboozled by the enemy, whose mind have been lured by the enemy. Therefore, the question of the hour is, the question I've come all the way from New Orleans, Louisiana, to ask everyone in this convocation service on the day is, how can we as believers win against the schemes of the enemy? How can we as sons and daughters of God be victorious against the temptations of the enemy? How can we stand in the midst of the attacks of the enemy? Well, brothers and sisters, the answer is you must, you must, you must have a renewed mind. Hence the subject of the sermon on this morning, the importance of having a renewed mind. And that's the point that the Apostle Paul uh, Huskins is making in this text this morning to the church at Philippi. Paul is saying, listen, folks. If we're going to win as believers, if you're going to win as sons and daughters of God, if we're going to be victorious in our walk, if we're going to be able to, be able to stand in the, in the midst of the tactics of the enemy, the fact of the matter is we must, Dr. Snow, Mr. Snow, we must, Tom, no, we must have a, a renewed mind. Hence the subject of the sermon, the importance of having a renewed mind. So I want to show you three things real quickly in the brief time that I have left. Three things that every believer in this convocation, three things that every believer in this chapter, three things that every one of us must never ever forget when it comes to being tempted by the enemy. First of all, a renewed mind should help you think about your Christ. A renewed mind should help you think about your Christ. Look at verses 5 and 6 of Philippians chapter 2. The Bible says, the Word of God says, the Scripture says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, a renewed mind should help you think about your Christ. You see, my friend, before we give into those seductions of the enemy, before we give into those temptations of the enemy, before we give into those attacks of the enemy, having a renewed mind should help you think about your Christ. In other words, when I think, when I think, Pastor Young, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, uh, my soul shouts, uh, hallelujah, when I think about all his accomplished works, uh, think about everything that Jesus did for you, uh, and he did for me. Many of us heard about it this past Sunday in our churches. He was born of a virgin just for you and for me. He was lied on and talked about just for you and for me. He had betrayed and beaten just for you and for me. He was denied and demeaned, spit on and mocked, stripped and teased. Uh, he was pushed uh, and shoved uh, just for you uh, and for me. He was abused and misused uh, just for you. The Bible says he left his home in glory to come down to earth to give us redemption story. Oh, my brothers and sisters, a renewed mind should help you think about your Christ uh, and all that he did for you and for you and for you uh, and for you uh, and all that he did for me. Think about it. He brought salvation for you and for me. He brought redemption for you and for me. He brought sanctification for you and for me. He brought uh, justification and regeneration just for you and for me. He loved us. He saved us. He died for us. Uh, he lived for us. Uh, he redeemed us. Uh, and one day he's coming back again. Uh, just for us. Even though, even though he was fully God, he became fully man and he gave his life just for you and for you and for you and for me. Ladies and gentlemen, how can you not 
want to live for him? How can you not want to win for him? How can you not want to stand for him? How can you not want to be victorious for him? How can you not want to be faithful to him? That's why I said when I think, when I think, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done, when my mind is renewed uh, and think about my soul shouts, praise the Lord, my soul shouts, hallelujah. But then there's another part in the text. Ladies and gentlemen, important of having a renewed mind should not only help you think about your Christ, but the second thing Paul tells in the text, a renewed mind should help you think about your choices. A renewed mind should help you think about your choices. Look at verse 7 in Philippians chapter 2. The Bible says, the Word of God says, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. A renewed mind, Huskers, should not only make you think about your Christ, but a renewed mind should help you think about our choices. Think about this. Jesus did not allow his heavenly reputation to affect his earthly responsibilities. Think about that. The Bible said he made himself of no reputation. He did not allow who he was in heaven to affect what he had to do here on earth. Think about it. Even though he was a king, he chose to become a bond servant. Even though he was fully God, he chose to become fully man. Even though he was deity, he decided to die. Even though he was God the Son, every choice he made while here on earth, he did to please God the Father. And that's why, brothers, that's why, sisters, that's why we must have the mind of Christ. Uh, that's why Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Because even though we are born again, even though we are saved, uh, even though we're redeemed, uh, we have the freedom to make our own choices. Everybody in here had the freedom to make your own choices. Well, you had to come to convocation and get credit. But other than that, you have any freedom to make your own choices uh, in life. That's why we must be sure that all of our choices please our Heavenly Father. That's what Jesus did. That's how I when the 33 years he lived here, everything he did, he did to please his father. That's why, remember when he was tempted by the devil after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, and the devil said, man, you know you're hungry. Why don't you turn those stones into bread? Remember what Jesus said? Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So if you want to please God, we must know what God says uh, about our churches, and God has a lot to say about our churches. In other words, we must know God's word. Think about it. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 say, trust in the Lord, with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God, uh, and he shall direct thy path. Uh, Psalm 37 and 3 say, trust in the Lord and do good, uh, and so shall thou dwell in the land, uh, and verily thou shall be fed. Uh, Psalms 37 and 4 say, delight thyself also in the Lord, uh, then he shall give you the desires of your heart. Uh, it's all about choices. Psalms 37 and 5 say, commit thy way unto the Lord. Uh, trust also in him, uh, and he shall bring it to pass. Uh, Psalms 118 and 8 say, it is better to trust in the Lord. Lord, uh, than to put confidence in man. Uh, it's all about choices. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19 say, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore choose life that both you and your children's children shall live. Uh, it's all about choices. Isaiah 26 and 3 say, I'll keep thee in perfect peace uh, whose mind uh, is stayed on thee because they trust uh, in the Lord. Uh, Psalm 27 and 14 say, wait on the Lord, uh, be of good courage, and he shall uh, Strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say it, on the Lord. Proverbs 14 and 12 say, There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15, Joshua said, Brothers, partners, listen, y'all about to get into stuff I'm not comfortable with. I know we were road dogs. I know we hung out together. But Joshua said, Man, I'm going to put a line in the sand. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the God which your father served on the other side of the flood of the gods of the Amorites, whom now you're not doing. But as for me, as for me, you got to make it personal, y'all. As for me and my house, uh, we will serve the Lord. It's all about choices. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Paul said, I beseech you, I beg of you, I urge you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, except unto God, which is your readable service. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And then finally, 
prepare them. Galatians chapter 2 uh, and verse 20 says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yes, say I'm not I, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, the choices that I now make, the decision I make by the faith of the Son of God, uh, who not only loved me, but he gave himself for me. It's all about choices. And the reason, and the reason, Huskies, that's crucial. The reason it's important is because every choice you make leads to a consequence. Every decision you make in life, it leads to a consequence. And that consequence can either be a blessing or it's going to be a burden. But you're going to make a choice. And every choice you make, brothers, ladies, every choice you make leads to a blessing or a burden. I heard the story months ago about Tom about this barber who was cutting this guy's hair. And this little kid was about to come into the barber shop. And the barber looked at the guy whose hair he was cutting and said, man, you see this kid? He said, said that, what? that's the dumbest kid in the world. So what you mean? He said, watch this. That's the dumbest kid. What? So little kid's coming to the barber shop. He said, hey, Mr. Barber, how you doing? He said, fine, son. He said, uh, uh, yeah, man, come here, come here. He said, uh, 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 how you doing? I'm doing fine. So he said, the barber puts a dollar bill in one hand, and he puts two quarters in the other hand. He said, okay, young man, which one do you want? And immediately, the young man took the two quarters and ran out the store. Bob looked at the guy who said, I told you, that's the dumbest kid in the world. This kid's coming to the barber shop once in a while, sometimes even twice a week. And every week, I do the same thing. Put a dollar bill in one hand, two quarters. He always takes the two quarters. I've never seen a kid that dumb before in my life. So the guy finished getting his head cut, and he went outside. He noticed a little kid who was in the barber shop, got to, to what? Coming out of the ice cream store, licking on an ice cream cone. He said, kid, come here. I said, yes, sir. So I was just in the barber. Say, I saw you licking on those ice cream cone. And the barber tells me that every you come into the barber shop every week sometime, twice a week, say, yes, sir, that's true. He says, son, every time you come into the barber shop, the barber says he puts a dollar bill in one hand and two quarters in another. He says, yes, sir, that's true. Lick it on his ice cream comb. And he says, young man, don't you know that a dollar bill is more than two quarters? That little boy looked at that young man, looked at his ice cream comb one more time. He says, sir, the day I take the dollar, the game is over. <laughs> Isn't that good? That little kid wasn't as dumb as he thought he was. It's all about choices, because every choice leads to a consequence. Think about it. I wonder if Adam and Eve would have made the same choice if they would have known the consequences. I wonder if Noah would have made the same choices if Noah would have known the consequences. I wonder if David, a man after God's own heart, the apple of God's eye, would have made the same choice to commit adultery with Bathsheba. If David would have known how it would affect his family and his reign as king, if he would have made, if he would have known the car. I wonder if Judas, one of the hand-picked twelve, Peter, follow me, Andrew, follow me, John, follow me, Tom, Judas, follow me, hand-pick. I wonder if Judas would have made the same choice. If Judas would have known that after he betrayed our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, a few hours later he would be committing suicide. It's, I wonder if he would have known the concept. Well, not only those in the Bible, but about some folk in the day and time. Well, I wonder if Michael Jackson, greatest entertainer that ever lived, I wonder if Mike would have made the same choices. Michael Jackson would have known the consequences. I wonder if Michael Vick would have made the same choice. I wonder if Lil Wayne would have. I wonder if uh, 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 T.I. and Mr. Clark. I forgot. I'm in a mixed crowd. Um, um, <laughs> Amy Winehouse. I wonder if Amy Winehouse would have made um, uh, uh, Lindsay Lohan, I wonder if she would have made the same time. Uh, uh, Paris Hilton, uh, 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 the Kardashian sisters, uh, 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 Britney Spears, oops, I did it again. I wonder if she would have made the same choices uh, uh, if, if, they, if she would have known the concert. I wonder if Whitney Houston, one of the greatest voices to ever sing, would have made the same choices. If Whitney Houston would have known the concert. Ladies and gentlemen, Every choice we make, every decision we make leads to a consequence. But not only those in the Bible, not only those in entertainment and football players and celebrities, but what about those of us in this room? What about the choice that you and I made? Would you have made some of the same choices you've made in life if you'd have known the consequences? If you knew your parents would find out, if you knew your spouse would find out, you knew your church would find out. 
You know, your classmates will find out. Would you have made some of the same choices? Would you have still lied? Would you have still stolen? Would you still smoke that first crack pipe? Would you have snorted on that first piece of coca? Would you still lied? Would you still uh, uh, spent all? Would you have still hung in the crowd that you hung? If you would have known the consequences of those choices, that your spouse would have found out, your kids would have found out, your friends, your church would have found, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the importance of having a renewed mind. That renewed mind should help you think about. Your choices, but I've got to come to a close. There's one more point that the Apostle Paul make, it makes here in this test. Why is it important, Houston Baptist Huskies? Why is it critical, freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors? Why is it imperative that we think about having a renewed mind, that we do all we can to have a renewed mind? Well, I'm kind of glad you are. Y'all ask some good questions here. I like this school. I, I want to come back, Dr. Sloan. Uh, uh, it's important to have a renewed mind because, number one, a renewed mind should help you think about your Christ and everything that he did for you. A renewed mind should help you think about your choices because every choice we make leads to a consequence. And then finally, a renewed mind should help you think about the cross. A renewed mind should help you think about the cross. In our churches all over America last Sunday, we talked about the cross. Verse 8, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, it's unfortunate that so many of us only think about the cross on Easter Sunday. It's unfortunate that so many of us only preach about the cross on Resurrection Sunday. It's unfortunate the only time we have a zero in on the cross is during Easter, during this past weekend. But ladies and gentlemen, if it had not been for the cross, we would be still dead in our sins. So every time you think about uh, the cross, it should help you think about what Jesus did for you. His suffering should help you think about the cross. His pain should help you think about the cross. His agony should help you think about the cross. The nails in his hands, uh, the nails in his feet, uh, the spear in his side uh, should help you think about the cross. Uh, the crown of thorns uh, on his head uh, should help you think about the cross. Uh, those seven saying that he cried uh, from the cross, uh, the first of being, Father, forgive them, uh, for they know not what they do, uh, should help you think about the cross. That second cry from the cross, as he looked at the thief on his right and said, today thou shalt be with me um, in paradise. That third cry from the cross, he looked at his beloved mother Mary, his beloved Sabbath John and said, woman, behold thy son, son, uh, behold thy mother, should help you think about the cross. That fourth cry from the cross, uh, when the S-U-N uh, refused to shine uh, because the S-O-N uh, was taking on the sins uh, of the world uh, and your Messiah, my Messiah, our Lord and Savior cried out, uh, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatana, why, God, uh, why has thou forsaken me? Uh, should help you think about the cross. Uh, that fifth cry, I thirst. Uh, that sixth cry, it is finished. Uh, that seventh cry from the cross. Uh, Father, daddy, into thy hands uh, I commend my spirit. Uh, and then he died. Uh, he died for you uh, and for you uh, and for you uh, and for me. But thank God uh, that's not how the story ends. Uh, three days later, he rose again. Uh, all power in his hand. Dead, where is that thing? Gray! Where is thy victory? And he did it all, brothers. He did it all, sisters. For you, for you, for you, for you. And he did it all for me. That's why our minds should be renewed. So we can walk right, so we can talk right, so we can live right, so we can pray right, so we can preach right, so we can teach right. My brothers and sisters, I come to a close. And thank you again, Tom. Thank you again, Dr. Sloan, for this privilege. I beg each of you. I plead with each of you. I beseech you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Because a renewed mind should help you think about your Christ. A renewed mind should help you think about your choices. A renewed mind should help you think about your cross. Don't sing as good as Lisa, never will try to be. But I want to close this sermon out just with a verse of a song. And if you know it, you can join with me. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away, rolled away. It was there by Come on, some of you know it. I receive my sight, and now 
I am happy. Come on, you got it. Now let's do it one more time. At the cross, at the cross, at the cross, at the cross, at where I first. And the burdens, and the burdens of my heart rolled away, rolled away. It was there I received my sight, and now. I am happy, oh. Father, thank you and praise you for the privilege that you've given us to be able to, 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 to show the fact that what you did at the cross, you did it for us. God, thank you for suffering for us. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for resurrecting for us. God, thank you that one day you're coming back again for us. But until then, God, your heart's desire is that every last one of us would have a renewed mind because a renewed mind should help us think about our Christ. A renewed mind should help us think about our choices. And a renewed mind should help, you th help us think about our cross. Thank you for this time at Houston Baptist University. Bless each and every one of us as we depart from this place. And we'll be careful, God, to give your name all the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. Let the people of God say amen. amen. God bless you. Thank, Thank you all for letting letter. me be here. Thank you all so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.